you can see that after one second we start to uh, append this um, to this, this uh, span. So now that we've done that, we know that our interval is actually working, so we can go ahead and adjust the code accordingly. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's also refresh our page so we don't have lots of A's across our page. And we're going to go ahead and first of all um, initially set the uh, counter with the uh, maximum time or the time that we've specified here. So let's go ahead and, oops, sorry, let's put that one in there. Uh, let's go ahead and again uh, use a selector to select our counter element on our page and we're going to set the text inside of this to time. So what this will do is it will uh, initially set our um, counter uh, value inside of here to 10 or whatever value that we feed in just here. So for example if we were counting with 5 seconds that would initially set this to 5. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually go down and count this uh, down. So we want to remove one for every second. So time equals time minus one. Every, every second it will minus one from this original value time, which is at the moment specified as 10. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, just test this. Uh, what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna initially set this to 10, the counter to 10. And then it will be 9, then it will be 8, 7, 6, 5, blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and take a look at our page. You can see it starts at 10 and then goes to 9, 8, 7, blah, blah, blah. And that will count all the way down to 1. Now we have a problem here because we need to include some kind of check. As you can see, it's gone to 0 and then minus 1. And this will just keep counting down for as long as you have this page open. So what we want to do is we want to catch this countdown at the value 1. And when we have caught it at 1, we want to go ahead and clear the interval and then uh, redirect the user to a particular page. And the reason we clear the interval is because if we don't, um, if the page load time is slightly longer than you know a, a, sec a couple of seconds or a second, uh, the counter will or automatically continue to count down until that particular page is loaded. So we can do a demonstration of this. If we were just to go ahead and set the window location equals URL, uh, again we're picking up this variable from here and placing it here. So after 10 seconds we're redirecting to this URL here. So let's go ahead and check this out and you'll see what I mean. Uh, oh, oh yeah, okay, so yeah. Uh, okay, so the reason this hasn't worked is we need to include an if statement to actually check if the time is equal to 1. So if time is equal to 1, we want to redirect the user to the URL that's been specified or fed to this function. So when time is equal to 1, we redirect the user. Let's go back and che check that. Okay, so we're starting at 10 again and we're counting down. Now watch very carefully and see when it gets to 1, uh, you might see it flicker to 0. Uh, oh no. Uh, that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do this at 5 so we can see what's happening a bit clearer. Go back there. Okay, so we're starting at 5, we're counting down and that should... Right, it's redirecting at 2 at the moment, so let's have a look at what might be going wrong. Uh, oh, of course, yeah, so we want this uh, at zero. Uh, the reason this is happening is that we are checking at it when it gets to one, and before we have a chance to go ahead and re, uh, you know, show this time, uh, it's actually all, all already redirecting the user. So we have a couple of options. We can either set this to zero, or we can bring this up to the top uh, and uh, keep it at one. So I'm just going to leave it here and say if time is equal to zero. Okay, so back to the page. We'll check that it actually works. So 5, 4, uh, 3, 2, and 1. Let's just wait for that. Right, at 1 it redirected. Now if we have, say, a page that slightly more uh, takes slightly longer to load, um, uh, for example, let's say ebay.com, and when we go ahead and test this out once again, uh, hopefully eBay takes a bit longer to load and you'll see this flicker to zero uh, before you actually see it redirect. There we go. Right, you saw it flicker to zero before the redirect happened and that's because uh, the eBay.com website uh, obviously um, obviously uh, is a bit slightly longer to load than Google. So we have a problem here and what we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and clear the interval uh, before we actually um, before we actually redirect the user. So we want to go ahead and say clear 
interval and this is above just before we redirect the user so we want to stop the interval now remember earlier I uh, called this interval interval so now what we can do is because this variable interval is equal to this function we can go ahead and specify interval in this clear interval here as a parameter so that will get rid of the interval and it will stop the counter and what this means is that the counter this whole thing will no longer uh, run and therefore when we return back and refresh you'll see a countdown it will stop at one, wait for the load, and then it will redirect the page. So it's a minor thing. However, when you include something like this code on your website, you want to make sure that you're not leaving the user hanging. So, uh, you know, and displaying the incorrect figure. We want it to stop at one and then wait for the page to load. We don't want it to go, you know, into zero or even minus figures. For example, if you had a page that took four or five seconds to load, you're actually going to end up having the user uh, be displayed with minus figures as they're waiting for the page to load. So now we've successfully completed uh, this timer or this countdown to redirect. Uh, if you want to use this on any page, all you would have to do is include counter.js uh, on a page that you want it to be used. And you'll go ahead and include an element with an ID of counter, or you can uh, change this and specify uh, which element you'd like to count down in. For example, we could count down inside of a paragraph. And we could call this um, count down and then we could change this to count down and it would work in exactly the same way you see we start counting down but we've just done this inside of a paragraph so as long as you've written it in this way it's an extremely flexible way uh, of simply including this including something with the ID of countdown or whichever you choose uh, and you can use it across your website so that is a uh, countdown to redirect using JavaScript and jQuery